And what's going on, tribe? It's Chief of New City. I'm in Raw, founder and chief tobacconist of Dreamer Cigar Company, Mississippi's only cigar maker and tobacconist at the Country Squire. And welcome to Party Profiles, baby. Well, everybody, uh, again, Chief of New City, I'm in Raw, uh, hailing from the north side of the Jack Presidential Hills, to be exact. Uh, formerly the artist known as Christopher DeAndre Paris Maddox. Uh, once I kind of start to reclaim my own and uh, really try to find myself in my own unique way, uh, I went through a renaming process, a spiritual renaming process, once I accepted Islam and uh, definitely try to uh, try to start my own trajectory. Man, I'm, I'm one of uh, three siblings. Uh, the oldest uh, grew up, grandmother raised home. My mother, uh, you know, was in prison. You know, I did a lot of time in prison. So did a lot of time without my mom, but my mom definitely uh, was a person, regardless of the circumstance, man, my mom, I know my mom loves me. And my, and, and, and her way, she thought that what she was doing um, was for the betterment of me and for in a lot of attentive reasons had she not done the things that she had done the way she did them i wouldn't have been the guy that i am now and to her you know uh i owe all the credit for my birth and for uh for that tutelage um grandmother raised me man my grandmother's very uh beautiful 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 soul uh my god my grandmother is uh definitely 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 uh a g in my regards man so got some beautiful siblings man you know of course family everybody had their moments with their family sometimes you sometimes you love them sometimes you hate them but you know the first thing uh the biggest lesson i learned from that childhood experience man was you can't pick them you gotta deal with them and that tells people how that that taught me unconditional love at a, at a young age and help has helped refine that process man i'm a simple cat man uh, I, uh, growing up, man, my my experiences as a child was always, you know, of course, we're from we're from the street. So sometimes the street gets the best of you, you know, uh, and then you let people, other people, and other families are going through stuff. So you kind of got uh, as yourself. So y'all all trying to figure it out. A lot of similar circumstances: absent fathers, mothers maybe maybe sickly, or mothers maybe in, uh, incarcerated as well, or other co or other. Uh, types of situations so for me man my childhood man grew up you know uh was one of a lot of uncertainty uh for the most part uh a lot of a lot of ebbs and flows you know uh good moments bad moments and um i just knew man as a child man i wanted better for myself you know uh talking to my mother uh you know through the prison cell and get a chance to go visit my mom while everybody else can go to a basketball game with their mom or go shopping with my mom. I was pulling up to the prison with my grandmother and my siblings going to accompany my mom, figuring it out in jail. And um, and, and to this point, man, that's when I got the best out of my mom. Uh, ironically, she had a very hard time kind of like staying out of trouble because she always felt that she needed to take care of something. She needed to give us more, 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 more. And uh, a lot of that stuff was materialistic and some of it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Um, but what I found then was I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that again. You know, that's not, that wasn't something that I wanted. I learned from it. I took the lessons good and the bad from it, um, embraced her through it, gave her her support through it, you know, but I wanted a lot more for myself. And at the time my environment didn't want what I wanted for myself, for me. So of course they, they fought with me on that, you know, so I got in trouble. You know, I, I went to a lot of schools. So some people may see me like, hey, man, he went to Provine with me or he went to Bailey with me. Or did I see him at Jim Hill all the time? Well, yeah, I used to get in trouble, man. Trying to figure it out, man. Was never just a kid that wanted to uh, wanted to be in trouble, but was always a kid that just so happened to run into it and didn't know how to get it out of it. Because I believe the street thing to do was to confront people when people wanted to confront you instead of just saying, hey, man, I don't want no problems and get out the way. So that's a lesson I had to learn. I think friendship community is the things that make me me man i love i love my friends i met beautiful friends and, and, I, and I will hope that my friends when god does decide to call me home that 
if my friends would speak on the uh, speak to my character, not about the accolades, but about how I love them dearly and uh, and how I tried to make sure I supported uh, what they do and who they are and who they are becoming. And, and fortunately enough, God gave me those people in return, and that makes me who I am, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dream of Cigar Company, man, started off for me uh, as a uh, a concept project, really, of me trying to increase the representation of uh, cigar owners and just a unique uh, avenue for my peers and stuff to take. So uh, over the course of time, just being a person who loves cigars and thought of it as a great hobby, and it became kind of an outlet for me to kind of creative to think and for me to decompress. Um, you know, I started my cigar travels, uh, just learning about the business, learning about the uh, about the craft itself, really getting indulged in the hobby. And from that point there, I uh, really wanted to try to increase our culture's perspective and just kind of bring people into some other creative ways where they can express themselves and also have a business. So that led me to, you know, really kind of trying to take this thing serious, started off apprenticing in the shop and then ended up becoming a general manager of such said shop. After that, man, started my travels abroad to learn how to actually uh, get the tobacco law skills that I needed to really impact the industry. After that, ended up going to Big Tobacco, uh, British American Tobacco Group, man. And after that, man, I really felt that I was equipped for what I needed at the time to really go ahead and take it out to the world uh, and to the marketplace to kind of show uh, my particular flavor on it. And thus in 2019, on the 5th of January, uh, which is subsequently uh, the founder's day of my greatest fraternity in my heart, Kappa Avisai, yo, to the noobs, uh, where we got a chance to bring this idea to uh, fruition and uh, Dream of Cigars was born. And from there, uh, we've done very well by Allah's grace. We've reached uh, 14 countries and as a uh, Four days ago, 35 states, man, they have, have touched our cigars. And man, to, to Allah, I owe the credit. Well, start primarily went to Cuba. I was where I was classically trained. I had 27 trips there to actually learn uh, to become a level nine roller. And for those who are uh, kind of curious as to uh, what are the, the classifications of cigar rollers? Uh, level nine roller means essentially I can roll all sizes or vitolas of cigars, uh, which are needed for the presentation. Of course, that's ranging right now. I'm smoking a, a Robusto, which is a 50 uh, ring gauge by five inches long. So of course you got uh, Salomon's, Figurados, you know, Churchill's, Lonsdale's, Cigarillo's, you know, um, cigarettes are even a, a, they're all considered sizes so essentially being able to roll those sizes was classified as one to do that and i went there to learn and that was a big thing for me uh, ultimately i'm a really cultural person i love culture I love getting a chance to get immersed in that and that's what that experience allowed me to do and but it more importantly allowed me to take that piece of that acquired history and apply it to my my blueprint and also figure out a creative way to highlight my culture in the process do in a world of time where everything is so fast and everything is like full of like instant gratification to be able to refine something and go through a process of watching stuff come to come to life i'm a creative man and i like to create things you know and not only to, to create things but to have people uh participate in the creation. So like in the words of Erica Badu, I am an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. You know what I'm saying? So what made me find, uh, fall in love with uh, Tabaculara in the first place was primarily because I already had a really enriched endearment uh, for the community just because of the people I've met, the cultures I got a chance to become to come across and for me to add value to that community uh, via my hands, uh, constantly makes me fall in love with it more, man. Cause now at this point, you know, for, for weddings now, for uh, special occasions, private dates, man, social functions, I'm getting a chance to watch different people from different walks of life come in with their, with their mindset on having a memorable good time. And for me to be able to be a small piece of that, you know, means everything to me, you know, cause I want a good time, you know, and I, and I think 
you know, these moments are, are what we said, what life is all about, the good times, you know, and to be, for me to be able to provide any kind of good time to people, man, makes me, makes me love it, man. I love it. My goal was to inspire, man. Uh, it wasn't, of course, money is the, was, you know, the, uh, an end goal at some point, but uh, my goal originally was to inspire. Uh, we all kind of have social settings, uh, you know, parents, maybe may be friends or society at large that tells you how you should uh, go about achieving your goals or kind of equating what is a tangible goal or what's a realistic goal or what's more um, luxurious or what more people think about stuff. For me, it was an opportunity to say, hey, I'm, I'm well educated. I'm well traveled and I found my lane and I wanted to inspire people to find that thing where they find that whether that's music, painting, cooking, writing, you know, uh, fitness, however, but for them to be able to find their creative voice and be an impact to the community of being a good neighbor. I just wanted to inspire people to be a good neighbor in their own way to find their voice. You know, now some people find their voice in different ways. But no, uh, many people hadn't got a chance to see us in particular, or many people in general, take this particular lane and, and do what I'm doing. So I wanted to show, hey man, you don't just have to go settle you know, for this because your mom or your dad told you this was the thing to do, or your friends said that this was the only thing that was respectable and cool. Uh, you don't have to give up on your dreams because you don't believe it will make way for you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they, they, the old church saying, you know, what God has for you is for you. You know, and it's just up to you to try to find that purpose and kind of curate that purpose while giving God the praise. And for me, uh, that situation worked out perfectly for me. And I went at that with that in mind. I'm focused on the experience. I think that's what makes 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 the business uh, unique for me. I'm really, really involved in the experience. It's like, hey, yeah, I had my product to some may seem to be this cigar here. You know, it may like, this is maybe the product, but no, that's not the product for me. The product is the experience, man. That That's uh, that's what makes me unique. I don't focus just on this. I can sell anything. I can sell candles and put my heart into some candles. I can serve a dish and make dishes, you know, uh, important. It's the experience uh, for me that really kind of takes me uh, to the next level and separates me from other uh, people who may be doing the same thing or something different. I focus on making sure that the people who are commissioning me to come be a part of whatever their moment is, is an experience they can talk about for years to come. Uh, it's something they say, hey, it may be they lost a relative or they got married and they had their first cigar and it was really unique and they feel like they got immersed in something. I really put my heart into that, man, to make sure that everybody enjoys the experience. So the experience, bro, the experience. Man, we got we got Cam, Cam Newton, 50 Cent, uh, Ocho, uh, man. But we got people in theater uh, that we work that we've been working with. Uh, we got our local uh, cigar people. I got sent, sent, sent to uh, DL Hughley, uh, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, my frat brother. Got a chance to put the cigars in their hands. Montel Jordan got a chance to put cigars in my brother's hands, man. Uh, a lot of people's participating in this cigar smoking thing, man. And uh, for me, I just shoot my shot at it, man, and hope it hope it stick, man. So funny story, we bringing up the uh, Cam Newton situation. If some people go back to my Instagram post, it's still up there. I posted it on my social media and said, hey, y'all tell Cam Newton to let me come roll on some heat. You know what I'm saying? And then on draft night, Cam Newton reached out to me to come roll on some heat. And I ended up getting down there that weekend for the Derby Day party. And um, the rest is history with that, man. Uh, got a chance to provide a service. They treated me very, very well, man. Uh, shout out to Fellowship in Atlanta, Georgia, man. Um, CJ Newton, uh, Cam's brother, is a co-owner and a general manager there, Akbar. But this situation, man, allowed me to definitely get uh, it set in my head that you can manifest whatever you want. Just be prepared for the opportunity when the opportunity arises. Sometimes God, you know, God is a, a, a humorous person. Sometimes he'll give you more than you can chew sometimes to see if you really prepared for the opportunity. And sometimes, and just luckily, man, I had prepared for opportunities like that. But my very first opportunity was D.L. Hughley when he put me on his Instagram page, man, and got a chance to get some sticks in front in his hands. And uh, that started out the journey for me. 
how do I define success for my business? Happiness, bro. Uh, happiness and being able to to have what I need, even though all the times I don't have what I would like, you know. And I think that's the beautiful ebb and flow of business. I think some people equate business to big car, fancy cars and big houses and luxury trips and stuff. And yeah, that stuff is great. But to be able to take care of your family, to be able to wake up with peace of mind, knowing that you're doing what you love and you're doing it, you're doing it out of love and be able to continuously get up every day, happy to get at it, you know, is what success is uh, for me. The cigar for me and, and society has embraced it is a token of respect, it's a token of success, it's a token of wealth, prosperity. Because most of the time when we see people participating in cigar smoking, they they wealthy, su uh, successful in their own right, you know, and have lived a long life. So we call them old people. You know, they have lived, they lived a long, fruitful life. And you know, most times when you think about, hey man, congratulations on your new child. Here's a cigar. Everybody's like, hey man, it's a it's a prestigious celebratory moment, man. It's an experience. And normally those that's a time that people partake in cigar smoking. So for me to, you know, to to inspire one cigar at a time is to just let everybody know this is my way of choosing, you know, to, to go about my goals. And you can do the same, you know. Uh, and no matter what it is that you're doing, you knocked out that finals assignment that's gonna get you uh get you this internship. That's worth a cigar, man. You know, you lived another day. That's a cigar. Friend, friend got into a wreck or something unfortunate happened, but they made it through. Y'all smoked a cigar together. Hey, that's a moment. You know, you got you start your business or continue with another year in business, birthday, whatever it is. It's always a time to celebrate. And if we truly are God's children and grateful for His life, man, you know, I feel like we should all be happy. And anytime I extend a cigar to someone, it's always a sign of respect to me. It's really like a form, it's another version of a handshake or it's another version of a hug for me. Because especially me, me making them, I'm making them out of love. So anytime I hand them to somebody, man, it's always out of love for me, man. So to inspire, you know, one cigar at a time. That's my mantra. You know, that's my mantra. <laughs> man, I'm a, I'm very much an individualist, man. Uh, I love art. I love art. My swag, the swag. Like I like the eras in time where, where where our culture was celebrated. We had self prestige about ourselves. We really enjoyed uh, making sure our community was viewed and respected in the proper light. And for me, that's how I you know how I treat myself, and that's how I like to do it, man. Finding my voice and style has always been about my voice, and it's always been the one thing in my life that's been consistent. Where I, no, you make it say whatever you want. You can call it ugly, you can call it fly, you can call it cool, you can, whatever you want to call it. But call it me though. It's who I am. And I never tried to be anybody else. And that's why, you know, so style for me is individualism. It's a display of art, my art, and my impact on the community, whether it's one person or 10,000 people that like my outfit. If it touched someone in some way and I made a friend from it, you know, that's what matters to me. And that's my style, man, simple. In my regard, it's simple because I don't take a lot of effort getting dressed. I like I, the song say, uh, you know, saying uh, Papa was a Rolling Stone. Now I got Rolling Stones in the bezel. That's Migos. All right, Avalanche. Well, that song right there let me know. I'm gonna go put on. I'm gonna go put on some ice tonight. You know what I'm saying? It's real simple for me. It's real simple for me. Man, so we celebrated three years on January 5th of, uh, of, of this year. Uh, three years in business. All praises uh, to Allah for that and all my friends and supporters who helped me with that. Uh, right now, man, we're in the next place where it's time to expand, man. Uh, God is saying more at this point. Uh, so this April of 2022, I'll be opening up my own retail location in the great city of Laurel, Mississippi, out in the country. So a vintage flavor is my type of vibe, getting a chance to really do something uh, of my own and really put my own touches on that. So Dream of Cigar Company, everyone, 
I am coming to Lower Mississippi. We're coming this year uh, in April, so stay tuned for the grand opening for that. So I'm very excited to be able to uh, to create a community. So when I gave, got a chance to walk part T through the whole shop and get a chance to show him the environment and the culture that has been created here and just such a love for it, to be able to extend that into another place and be able to bring and put a little bit a little bit of me into, inside the place and put a bit a little bit of my travels and my experiences inside of that is a beautiful thing. And uh, now, man, we have extended our team so now now it's not just uh, me no longer so now i have some uh some help uh, so that's a beautiful thing for myself shout out to my uh, my brothers and friends out there in houston texas man stogies and bow ties um those gentlemen came into my life in 2021 and we got a chance to uh to do something beautiful together and really kind of start something that's going to be long uh long lasting and meaningful so they're they just joined my team as uh you know my my newest to back in it so they'll be offering the rolling service in the houston area i'm very very excited about that um i think that's beautiful man uh my goal uh in the next five years however is to really get back into some of my core principles of community, man, and giving people that second chance. I have a really, really, really uh, fond uh, uh, connection to uh, people coming out of prison. So my goal is to really kind of give people, uh, go to those prisons over the next couple of years to build out this factory that I'm trying to put together, where I have um, people who are trying to come out of the judicial system and start, start anew, uh, <laughs> for lack of better terms, to give them an opportunity to come do something that's cool, something that's respectable, and something to make them an earnest living. So I'll be trying to get with the prison industry to try to figure out those people that are coming out looking for jobs, where they can learn a craft, that they can do with their hands, where they can go embark on their own way to provide for their family in a legitimate way uh, and change the circumstance. So I'm really looking forward to that. So in five years, I would like to have a nice size factory uh, owned by us, for us, uh, to show ourselves to the world and whatever that looks like, man. Man, family, um, y'all can find me anywhere the smoke is, but particularly uh, the Country Squire. I'm a local tobacconist here in the Jackson Metroplex, Mississippi's oldest uh, pipe and tobacco retailer in the great state of Mississippi. So I'm here um, weekly, even when I'm not working here, I'm always in the shop smoking, laughing, cracking jokes and reading books or something. So anyway, come by and come see me here. Feel free, we would love to come see you. If you wanna book me for a service, any kind of event, weddings, corporate functions, private parties, dates, whatever, you name it, we'll come uh, come provide our experience for it. You can, you can find me on there, on my website at www.satorial.com tobacconist.com on IG at satorialtobacconist.com and y'all can follow the product which is the mainstay cigars at Dreamer Cigars. So I'm a neighborhood guy try to make sure I stay local so anytime y'all want to reach out to me I respond to everybody. I, I love y'all. I thank y'all for y'all comments without without y'all and being able to help me push my dream forward I wouldn't be able to do so. So that's where y'all can find me. I would love to host you sometime. <laughs>